Here's a new painting I'm starting. It's 16 by 20. I drew it uh, quite quickly. Uh, of course, that's due to a lot of uh, experience uh, in pencil. And um, then I applied tones with uh, markers, which are basically waterproof. So uh, I use two types, this brown and this brown. Uh, the next step is going to be to add um, sepia, uh, I'm sorry, burnt umber. First phase of adding the burnt umber is a light wash. Here's a bit more detail added, uh, some light washes, things like that. We allow this to dry, we're gonna come back again with another uh, coating. Okay, that's about it for the umber. And you can see I've tried to add the tail here and there. I've also uh, put in some little white spots and things like that. So uh, all of those details will stay there when I begin to go over. And uh, the next phase will be uh, thin uh, layers of paint. Here's the glaze color before mixing it together. And uh, it's going to take some uh, experience to know what colors to use. It's going to be a green, but I've added a tiny bit of uh, sienna to dirty it up. You could call this uh, the mother color. And having uh, umber underneath is warmth. So uh, you're basically, in a way, painting warm to cool. You want uh, shadows to have some warmth to them. And using umber as an underpainting always guarantees that you're going to have some warmth coming through. And here's the first stage of dropping that color in. So we got it in the background. And uh, what we do to speed drying up, these are just cheap craft store acrylics, is uh, use a hairdryer. Here's what I'm adding to the background mixture. A little purple and blue. Going to darken it. Now I'm working this color in all over the painting. It looks a little uneven because parts of it are wet. But I'm also putting it in uh, other areas, uh, basically moving it around. These colors should be uh, basically located throughout the painting. You don't want to have things looking like they're cut out. You want uh, colors to be bouncing back and forth, basically. Okay, after having stepped back in here and looked at it, I decided that the uh, colors were too bright. Uh, the background color that I put down. So I mi mixed up a sort of a mud color, which is just basically blue and uh, burnt umber, and uh, glazed the whole thing with a uh, large brush. So you may be able to see that's not white anymore. It's, uh, it's this dirty color. So anyway, now you can see I'm fine tuning things a bit. I have created another dark color, which is uh, might be hard to recognize here, but it's basically umber and blue. And uh, it's okay to use these sorts of dirty colors because uh, when you put things over them, uh, they will with that have brighter hues, then they will stand out well. Now I've gone and mixed pure black into that color. So uh, the color that I get isn't uh, isn't pure black, uh, but it's getting close to it, and it's certainly a different value. And you want to have different values, so um, here I am putting it in the hair. Now you're going to see how this is going to make everything really punch. I've mixed a, it looks a little uneven because it's wet, but uh, I've mixed a, a blue, a very, very light blue, uh, blue and white. And uh, basically, this is a cool highlight color. So we've got some very warm shadows, cool highlights, so they're playing off each other. And this is basically going to be the color of light in the picture now. And uh, so once I start applying it here, I can begin uh, moving it around and putting it in other places. Highlights. Okay, well that's basically where we stop for tonight. It's uh, not near done, but a lot's been put in. Uh, basically at this point it's all filling in areas and what's called controlling the edges. Uh, controlling the edges is something Frazetta mentioned that... Uh, often took longer than he would like yeah it does it goes on forever so what will happen is i'll have the work uh have the painting going here and i'll be you know running around the house doing things i'll come by it's like oh shit, gotta fix that you know fix these little details basically i do that for probably a day maybe two days tops uh until all the uh little details are uh fixed and controlled and then you got something that looks three-dimensional.
Hey, here we are next day, and um, something I wanted to fix. I wasn't happy about the uh, edge uh, of the hair in the background. I felt that it was uh, attracting too much attention. So you got two options, either light in the hair or dark in the background. So I mixed another color, darker color. Not only did I drop it in up there, which actually in a way creates more space, but also put it in the foreground and some other places. Okay, here we are. Other things have been added in. And you may be wondering why um, in the early stages we're using such muddy colors and things, earth colors, earth tones. And that's basically because, um, well, that's what nature is. There's a lot of that. And then uh, ultimately what will happen with a painting like this is the pure colors will be added uh, toward the end. So I've also got the idea, this wasn't planned to have a beach here, but um, the idea came and it's, it seems like a good uh, good way to cordon off the uh, corner of the painting. Okay, I think that's about it. It's funny because the uh, the painting itself looks a lot, uh, lot sort of smoother and better blended than the, than the video does. But uh, anyway, uh, it's going up on eBay.